Maroon Ford escapes his blue bike sliding into the parade road. Police say Daryl Brooks plowed this maroon SUV through a crowd of parade participants and onlookers in Waukesha, Wisconsin, Sunday. Overnight, a vigil in Waukesha for the victims, side by side, community members coming together to grieve. Earlier this month, he was arrested for allegedly using what appears to be that same SUV to run over the mother of his child after allegedly striking her with a closed fist. Brooks was charged in that incident but released when he posted bail $1,000. And tonight, those new images of the suspect a short time after the parade crash. Authorities say he drove through the parade and then knocked on the door of this home, saying he was asking for help in getting an Uber. Hey. Shortly after police arriving there and arresting him tonight, that suspect in court today, prosecutors said this was an intentional act to strike and hurt as many people as possible. Um, you refused to answer my question about whether refused. you would uh, uh, so go back to like the jail. To That's another interruption. Mr. Brooks, you do not have a right to interrupt the court. No, um, was, I will remind you once again attention. of the uh, Supreme Court rule. It's on a yellow laminated uh, double-sided um, piece of paper that is before you. Um, I, I checked, I verified, that, uh, it is. I accept it in return. Mr. Brooks, value. that's yet another interruption. Y'all, this one is horrifying from the word go, from the crimes that he committed to his behavior in the courtroom. Absolutely fasten your sofa seatbelt for this one because it's a doozy. Hello, Sofa Squad, and welcome back to The Damn Sofa. That's The Damn Sofa, and my name is Paul. Mr. Roscoe, who is usually our Sofa Squad leader, he is on the sofa because he is not feeling well. And by the sofa, I mean the actual sofa in the real living room, not our little place here. Now, y'all, today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at a case that is currently going on at the time of this filming. Um, I'm not sure when you're going to be able to see this because it's been crazy at work. So it could be over with, it could not be, but it is highly requested so many people have been dropping comments asking paul are you watching this you've seen it so i started watching this and oh my god so let's go ahead and jump on in now the way this video is going to work is this first of all we're going to watch some clips to kind of get us all on the same page of what this case is and at the center of it it is a heartbreaking absolute tragedy that took numerous lives and instilled absolute fear and terror in the hearts of many okay so just be warned for that it is not for the faint of heart i had actually forgotten about this case because you know how the the crime happens stuff happening you know we go on if you're not like a victim of the crime or know somebody in it things go on and whatnot and so when this resurfaced i was like oh my gosh i forgot about this absolutely horrifying incident my heart goes out to all the victims, their family members, the survivors, every last one of them. This is nothing I can ever imagine going through. Now, what has also taken place is this is another one of these cases where the defendant has decided to represent himself. And y'all, again, another study in narcissism on full display. So the way this will work is we're going to watch video clips and then I'm going to offer commentary in between. Um, I'll put some links down below if you want to watch like the whole court case without my commentary on this. We're going to be just watching some like main, oh my goodness, holy McMoley type scenes. Now before we do jump into that, first of all, I want to say thank you to everybody who makes the Sofa Squad possible. Would not be here without you. And I also want to welcome to the Sofa Make Some Room, today's sponsor that is helping to make this video and the squad possible. Hello, Silva Squad. This fall has been crazy with moving and working, all while I'm trying to enjoy the fall vibes. But you know what? HelloFresh has made it so much easier by delivering fall's freshest flavors right to our doorstep. And there's other new season recipes with all those fall flavors, like scallops over butternut squash risotto or balsamic rosemary pork chops. You can even get the whole family involved with HelloFresh's limited edition baking kits. So this week, I got a try a whole bunch of recipes that are new to me. Turkish spice chicken apricot pan sauce, spicy Peruvian chicken, and the one I'm cooking today is the sweet ginger pork chops, and it was amazing. Every HelloFresh recipe includes ripe, just-picked produce that travels from the farm to your door in less than a week. And as always, their portions are easily done, already done for you, so there's no waste, no extra cleanup, and you're saving money, as well as food. Now, if you follow me, you know that I am preparing to move 
move. And that has been all over the place, but HelloFresh has been consistent. I've been able to keep up with my health goals because I know what's in HelloFresh meals and the recipes are so easy to follow. Y'all, they're usually done in like 30 minutes or less. Remember, HelloFresh is totally flexible. They're all about tailoring things to your schedule and goals. You can change your meal preferences, update your delivery day, and even change your address with just a few taps on the HelloFresh app. You can even swap out proteins or sides, upgrade to choice proteins, or even add protein to a veggie meal, which I've done before and it's awesome. It's never been easier to eat your way. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code REPORTINGLIVE for my Sofa 65 for 65% off plus free shipping. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code REPORTINGLIVE for my Sofa 65 for 65% off plus free shipping. Okay, so be sure to check out the description below for all the links to them. Give them a shot. We love them here. Now let's go ahead and jump on in and let's listen to a clip of the opening statements of the prosecutor lining out for the jury what is, you know, what took place on this horrifying day. The streets were lined with friends and family members and neighbors, people there to soak up the atmosphere. Kids ran into the street to grab candy from the people who were throwing it from the parades. It sounds corny, but I think you'll see from the videos, there was a true sense of joy in the air. Daryl Brooks killed that joy. He replaced it with terror, trauma, and death. The evidence is going to show that Mr. Brooks left behind a trail of carnage and chaos as he made his way down Main Street through the parade route. The evidence will show that he left that crime scene, created that crime scene, in fact, because he was fleeing from another one, one where he had laid his hands on a woman and where police involvement became inevitable. So as he careened down Main Street, swerving from curb to curb, Hands glued to the steering wheel, eyes fixed on the road in front of him with a silent rage on his face. He hit the gas with his red Ford Escape and used it as a battering ram over and over again, striking men, women, and kids. Now, as we heard the prosecutors just discuss, this was a horrifying day, but it didn't just start there. There was a whole other thing going on before that and clearly a lot going on beneath the surface of a human being who would be willing to do this. So let's continue to learn a little bit more about what was taking place before the actual tragedy at the parade. Once we've got that established, we're gonna move into the first chapter of this story. and You're gonna hear about the origin of Mr. Brooks's rage that day. A violent domestic argument with Erica Patterson, his former girlfriend and the mother of his child. Erica Patterson is going to testify either today or tomorrow, hopefully today. She's going to tell you that in November of 2021, she was staying at the Women's Center, which is a shelter here in Waukesha. And on the day in question, November 21st of 2021, the defendant showed up in Waukesha in his red Ford Escape that she knew he drove and he argued with her and he harassed her and he punched her in the face. Now, as you've heard, his former girlfriend, who we're going to hear from in just a minute, uh, went through a horrifying experience right before this. Now, one thing I often think about this is the weight that she's probably carried on her shoulders about this day, about this event, knowing what ended up taking after this. Now, this, of course, is not to cast blame on her, but I just can't imagine number one, surviving someone like Daniel Brooks, right? Because I'm just like, I mean, you know, that probably doesn't happen too often. Clearly, so you've seen clearly this guy is un hinged right but then to know that he went on to do this would absolutely shatter me so let's actually listen to a quick snippet of testimony from her we were messaging and calling each other all day we were arguing back and forth he came out there well i told him i was with miss corey um and he came out there i told him where i was got in his car we drove around and then i forgot the street we went up that street it's a hill it's kind of by the Walgreens. Um, we went up that hill, we drove around, me and him got into an altercation. He hit me in my eye, I jumped out of the car, 
walked and found my way back by Frame Park. Um, and then he followed me there. And then I went back in his car and I got out and I had called Corey. Well, I called Corey before that. And she came to meet me. I told her that me and him got into an altercation. So she met up with me. And by the time she got there, um, she pulled me out the way because his car turned around. He swerved. She pulled me out of the way. He got out of his car and they got into an altercation. He pushed her in her face. And I don't remember if she hit him back or anything like that. But after that, we walked away and walked back to the women's shelter. Now, again, my heart goes out to her. Also, I'm very proud of her for getting up here on the stand because, remember, he is representing himself. So he is questioning her. He will cross-examine her. She is facing her accuser. And, again, it, we watch these here at the Sofa Squad all the time. These absolute psychopaths, in my opinion, that want to get up there and re-victimize the victims, right? Her testimony, along with countless others, is completely heartbreaking in this case. One thing that really stuck out to me in watching this was some of the police testimony. Testimony. And I want to look at a clip of one officer because very rarely do you see officers break that, you know, that statue, that, you know, that facade they have of, you know, just non-emotion and all that. But this really hit home to see this officer get up there trying to hold it together as to how utterly horrifying this day was for so many. A newly released criminal complaint saying an officer observed Brooks looking straight ahead directly at him and it appeared he had no emotion on his face. I only watched it for a, a short period of time before returning to my squad car um, knowing that some sort of police action was going to need to be taken. What did you do once you got to your squad? Uh, I got in my squad car. Um, it was bombarded with um, the most terrible um, oh my god the poor guy you know the things that he was hearing and the things that he saw haunt him every moment of the day and especially in those moments where you put your head down on the pillow at nighttime and you're just left alone with your thoughts that's what i kept thinking i was like the things that this man and countless others on that day have locked into their mind's eye right i mean it just it sends chills down my spine now of course as we said countless times in this video daryl did choose to represent himself and uh it went as expected it was off to a very rocky start. So what I want to do is look at some of those clips that were, whew, I haven't seen the likes of it in quite some time. Notice that uh, one of the jurors, the lady in the black that's closest to the screen in that corner chair over there, I recognize her from um, my initial appearance. Um, she flipped me off coming in to my initial appearance and coming out. I know it's her for a fact, I seen her about like how I'm looking at you right now. So I know for a fact that's her. I don't want that to end up being an issue. Is this some type of way that could be addressed by your honor? Um, Mr. Brooks, you had an opportunity to exercise preemptory strikes and even to question uh, jurors about that. You chose not to. So at this point, any issue you have with that juror is waived. Okay, uh, you do remember that I was not present in the courtroom. I couldn't, I couldn't see all I can see from that courtroom in there is just you, your honor, and the prosecution's table. I can't even see the bailiffs. So it was no way for me to even see who the jury was. Obviously, I wouldn't know them by name. If I would have been able to see the jurors, I would have immediately addressed that. I mean, my God, the juror flipped me off. <laughs> just. Are you kidding me? Amen to them if they did. Um, Y'all, this guy is a, I don't want to say he's a master at um, stalling, but he, it's like a five-year-old having a meltdown every five seconds in the damn courtroom. And this is one of many of his antics, and we're about to go through several of them. Now, you also heard the judge sit here and say, you know, Mr. Brooks, you had a chance to do ABC, you chose not to, and oftentimes we see this in these cases where people represent themselves because it's more of like this stunt that they're pulling, right? Because it takes a certain type person to represent themselves and 
go down this path. And oftentimes what I think, at least for me, what I've seen is the person is doing it to re-victimize people again or have their last say. It's really not to try and get out of trouble, right? And I feel like that's going on here because, I mean, you can't really get out of what he's done, right? I mean, it's pretty obvious. So to just do these stall taxes and that type thing it just it runs all over me and again you heard her also mention or him mention that he was in the courtroom i mean this his behavior will land him out of this court and we will see some of that here momentarily um mr brooks you just interrupted me within a minute of us starting this case here today i'm asking you to respectfully not interrupt me that's the second time so i can go through the list of things that i need to get through this morning, I just wanted to state it for the record that Mr. Brooks, it wasn't the proper time to do that. That's now the third interruption. So, with all due respect, Your Honor, every Mr. time Brooks, we, every by time saying we, all due respect doesn't change the fact that you're interrupting me. Can you imagine being this poor judge, getting up every morning during this time and being like, "This is my work day. This is my work day." More power to her for going in there. I, and she's keeping control of the courtroom in a very wonderful way. Um, again, their arrangements have been made for you to appear in street clothes or civilian clothes. Um, I would like you to appear in street clothes. And the reason why, sir, is to reduce or even eliminate even the appearance that you are in custody. And it is your choice, though. Are you willing to go back to your cell and put on your suit? Um, it is my right to do so or to not do so. And at this point, Your Honor, who doesn't know that I'm in custody? Mr. Who Brooks? Know that? <laughs> I mean, honestly, all, he's got a point, okay? I mean, he kind of got the point there. So his logic there, I was just like, well, Okay. Now, again, obviously the courtroom is sitting here trying to just dot I's, cross T's, because this, you already know he's going to try and appeal this, whatever it is, whatever it is, is if we, you know, I mean, innocent into proven guilty. Okay, we get all that, but I mean, you know, wink, wink. But, I, I mean, honestly, y'all, I mean, the judge is trying really hard here, and God bless her for doing it, but I mean, this is the kind of behavior, I mean, just this, like, I'm going to remain in my clothes, and the, you know, whatever his uh, jumpsuit, and again, as we'll see later in the trial, he does change back into his, you know, business attire, whatever, and I completely understand, it's like, look, you don't want this illusion, even though everybody knows, like, you're incarcerated, right, it's just that mental thing, or whatever, and he also does have the point, like, pretty much everybody knows he is incarcerated, so it's, you know, rock in a hard place type situation. But as we will soon see, even the sweet judge has a limit. Uh, Mr. Brooks, you're interrupting me no, yet you, again. You just weren't All right, so I, I Mr. Interrupt. Brooks, you are now going to be removed to the other I don't courtroom. Get sent to that. I have I'm had a dozen or more interruptions. I will be off the record while we do that. Thank you, everyone. I don't agree to a stop. Well, I move for a motion to dismiss for being under duress and being coerced into a contract that I, that I did not consent or agree to. The one thing that blows my mind with these all the time is the amount of respect and rights that these criminals expect to get when they gave that no one else, none of their victims they ever gave that to, right? Now in this, I'm so glad the judge finally did this and listen to him, I'm under duress, I'm this, I've got shot collars on. I'm just like, dude, chill out. I mean, they can't even get to like the trial, okay? Like this is just insane. This is taxpayers' money. Not only that, God bless the victims and their families. This guy is literally every moment slapping them across their face with this behavior. All right, we are back on the record. Appearances are as they were before. I need to make a record that at 8.42 a.m. this court ordered Mr. Brooks be removed from the courtroom due to repeated uh, interruptions and disruption. <laughs> now, here's the, so he's been removed to the other courtroom. He is now shirtless. It, it, they've cut his mic. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, 
Like, you've got to be kidding me. But one thing with the behavior, imagine being that former girlfriend. Imagine having an altercation with this man on the street. Imagine this man walking the streets among us. We see where it led to absolute carnage. I will ask you, sir, do you want to come back into this courtroom? You've been unmuted to answer that question. Not until I can receive medical treatment for the bruise that I have on my arm and the cut. You said, you just said a while ago on the record that you cannot see blood. That's because I wiped it on my pants and you can still see the blood in the cut and a big bruise right here on my arm. I was told that the nurse would be coming in to see me. And then I was told, no, she's going to come at the next recess, which we just took it. I know it was technical difficulties why you call it the recess, but that was more than enough time for me to at least be seen at least get the, the uh, cut cleaned out and get it bandaged, at least at minimum that, and for somebody to look at this bruise. That was, that was my position on why I was not yet ready to come back into the court because I felt like this needs to be addressed. Well, roll the damn red carpet out for my ratted too. Again, I ask the squad and I guess Mr. Brooks, did he put this much care and concern into the safety and welfare of others who he was running down on the street? I mean, this is a man who was refusing to come back in to, for a Band-Aid, okay? And a bruise on his arm. Now, clearly we know he's just trying to work the system. He's stalling. He's trying to maneuver. He's just playing a game, right? But again, it's these type of gaslighting, these chess moves, these this and that, that is so frustrating to watch, especially when we know that countless numerous lives were lost but not only that like y'all there are so many victims in this case right people who survived thank god they survived that are just watching this and having to testify against him and it's like you ran me over in the street and you're refusing to come in and tie this up because you need a band-aid I'm done. Now remember how we looked at the clips earlier of his ex-girlfriend and her testimony? Well, let's watch another one of her to get a taste of how the questioning went because it was so bizarre. And again, these never go well when the perpetrator is questioning the victim, right? One of the victims. It just, it's never goes well. It never ends well. I feel bad for the victim, but I'm also very proud of them and her in this case for getting up here and facing this man because I can only imagine he was a scary, scary person to be with. Um, you stated that you were engaging in a conversation with the alleged defendant uh, via the telephone. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Texas, phone calls? Yes. Um, were those texts and phone calls of what, what nature were they of? Me and Mr. Brooks were arguing throughout the day. In the texts and phone calls? Yes, we were. Um, if there were, uh, if the conversation was argumentative, why would you agree to meet up with the alleged defendant? I do not know. Um, do you recall how the, the media was supposed to be set up? I don't recall. Now, isn't the use of the third person perspective like interesting? We get kind of confusing. And it does create this like separateness on that. But the way he's constantly like the alleged you know, uh, defendant, the alleged, uh, you know, whatever he was calling it. Now, in that whole thing where he was like, well, if it was argumentative, why would you have agreed to meet up? Y'all, I hate to say it, but I was like, well, I mean, he's got a good one there. You know what I'm saying? But nonetheless, and you already know there's so much behind it, right? I mean, this poor girl being in a relationship with this man, you can already imagine what he's put her through. So, you know, I'm not even trying to blame her for that one, but it was very interesting to me to see how quick he was with that question. Uh, and we will see later on, the judge does say, you know what, you've come up with some good points about this, which burns me alive to hear the judge say that, but it is what it is. So in this particular scenario here, it's just so bizarre to me to hear them talking this way, but also to get a glimpse of him talking to her because it just creates this mental imagery for me of just like a day at the house maybe and what it would be like if he was wanting something that he needed to get and how he probably could 
you know how these types are they'll you know create a scenario and gaslight it to be able to leave the house and that kind of thing and i was like oh my god this poor woman now this whole thing that went down when he tried to run her down when he ran her down the road there was another woman with her another friend and we're about to hear from her but we're also going to be watching his reaction to some of her testimony which is jaw dropping so let's watch that clip did mr brooks say anything to you or erica or nick as he was leaving he told Erica he was, oh. Um, the basis for your objection, you said objection, right? Is, is, is hearsay and irrelevant? <laughs> um, is it being offered for the truth of the matter, certain? Well, it's a statement by a party opponent, so it's not hearsay. Oh, it's his statement, sorry. Uh, miss, I think I misheard what she said. All right, um, the objection is overruled. Um, if it's, uh, she may testify as to words that you spoke on this occasion Go ahead. he told erica that he was gonna find her and he's gonna kill her well real nice fellow there isn't it I mean, y'all, this guy's a monster. And this is the whole thing when he's showing up here doing all of this. I'm just like, are you kidding me? I mean, imagine this laughing at the witnesses over this testimony. I'm like, what does he think? I mean, this is in front of a jury. Now, however, they will take a weekend recess and he will come back with a little bit of a different song to play on his fiddle. But I would like to bring the jury out. But of course, Mr. Brooks, I need to turn to you first and see if there's any issues you believe the court should address. Uh, very briefly, um, I just want to state this for the record that um, I would like to issue the, the court an apology for me um, in regards to my actions last week during the trial. Um, I just want the court to understand it's, it's, it's very emotional uh, right now, not not only for just the whole situation of the trial, uh, the families here that have to go through, you know, everything that's going to be involved with the trial, but also my family as well and myself is it, very, very emotional. And but not to excuse my actions, I should. Uh, carry myself uh, with, with uh, better respect than that. I wasn't raised that way. And um, I owe you, Your Honor, and the court an apology. And, and I'm going to stand up as a man and, and, and tell the whole court and you, Your Honor, that I apologize to the bailiffs, that I apologize for my actions. Um, like I said, that's not how I was raised. I come from a Christian background. My mother did not raise me that way. She did not raise me, you know, to act out. Uh, out of frustration and irritation and, and, and anger. And I just wanted everybody to know that I apologize for my actions. And um, I'm going to try my best to um, whatever happens to conduct myself um, with respect and with respect to the court. I would have crawled under the desk if I was the judge, the prosecutor, whoever, the sheriff behind him, the, the cop, you know, is like, oh my God. I mean, y'all, the cringe. First, so let's break this down for a couple of minutes. First of all, he 100% is saying this to get accolades from everybody. He wants a pat in the back, like, good boy. Secondly, this is all I'm thinking when he's like, I wasn't raised this way. I come from a Christian family. I'm like, well, did they raise you to, to you know, plow down a, a Christmas parade? Are you crazy? It makes me feel like he spoke to, and again, this is just me going off here, um, like his mother or someone like that. She was like, I raised you better than that. You need to get up there and apologize and put that suit on and da-da-da-da-da, because I also notice he's wearing the suit. That type thing, right? Now, a couple of things to notice in here. He was like, no matter what happens, I'm going to try right he still can't contain himself because again make no assumptions this is about this is a maneuver this is a chess play he does not mean any word he is saying he again is looking for compliments he's looking for this he's trying to butter the situation up clearly he's changing tactics here now also rewind back to the beginning of his speech when he said um you know this is just very emotional you know the family's here the family's having to go through all this you know my family here again you're getting up and apologizing and even 
on any minute level, if you did something like this or were accused of this, you should never be even trying to garner any level of sympathy or saying, I'm going through a hard time or anything like that. Because you literally have numerous people who lost their lives, dozens and dozens of people who were injured, and then all these people's you know, loved ones and whatnot. They don't want to hear that, right? They don't want to hear that your family is going through a hard time because you're going through trial for this, okay? So, again, this is insane. The fact that he stands up, I want to apologize to the bailiffs. I'm surprised they didn't tackle him because <laughs> I was waiting for that. I mean, this guy is on hinged okay if he's not in like solitary confinement and like when he goes back to jail at nighttime or whatever trust me i mean this dude i'm just like this is insane so mm, <laughs> i mean i'm just like oh my gosh so a couple of things first of all if you want to see another case where the dude represented himself except he was literally just re-victimizing the victim on the stand it was his, his wife then you're going to want to click the video here now also stay tuned because if you're seeing this and i'm going to be updating more videos coming down the pipeline about this case so be sure to subscribe and check back to check out those videos as well